Hi, Keith Young here with another Photoshop tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to blend type and images together if you're creating a flyer, for instance. So let's get started. I have three methods that I'm going to show you today, and they're all very quick and easy to do right inside of Photoshop. Let me show you method one. The first method is to create a box or simple shape and then to make it semi-transparent above the image so that you can add your type and still make it readable. If we turn this box off that's behind there you'll see that your type is very hard to read so the whole reason I, I've come up with this tutorial is because sometimes people have a problem putting together their images and their type and they don't know how to blend the two together so I'm going to show you these really quick techniques that are going to allow you to do that alright so once again the first one is to just simply add a semi transparent box or shape behind your type and I'm going to show you how to create this effect all you need to do is grab your shape tool in the toolbar I'm going to pick the rectangle tool I'm going to set my foreground color to white and in the tool options bar I'm going to make sure that shape layers is selected and I'm going to uh, make sure that I create this shape layer underneath my type and I'm just going to click and drag right underneath this type here and as you can see there's already an opacity of 64 percent applied to this uh, box I had previously applied that to an effect so it's gonna do the same thing but you can change this to any percentage you want 80 percent is a good percentage because you can still see through this box and your type is very legible if you begin to lower the opacity you'll notice that your type starts to blend in a little bit more to the background but this is still very legible even at 50 percent so this is a great way for you to add your type to an image uh, that you like alright so this is the first technique I'm going to show you the second method that I'm going to show you is let me uh, activate this type let me activate this alright the second method I'm going to show you is just to make a uh, white to transparent gradient behind your type and overlay that over your image so it's not quite as constrained as the box and this gives you a little bit more freedom for your type to be a little bit more open than with uh, the shape containing it so let me show you how to create this effect really quickly let me turn off the box there and what we need to do is we're going to create a new layer select the gradient tool in the toolbar and I have white as the foreground color I'm going to click in the tool options bar right on top of this gradient here and you want to make sure that you have the foreground to transparent gradient selected and then click OK then what you're going to do on your new layer is simply hold down the shift key so that you constrain your gradient to a, gr a straight line and then click and drag across your image like so and as you can see we have this nice uh, gradient that goes from white to transparent that really makes our type pop out uh, to blend this in a little bit more to help make this effect a little bit more believable to still give us that image back there because we're kind of blanking it out over here in this area we can knock down the opacity of this layer as well so that we can still see some of this background image but our type is uh, readable and that's important when you're creating a flyer you want to be able to blend the images together but still have your information be read alright so now we're ready to move on to our last method 
The last method that I'm going to show you is, let me turn this type off. What I did is I blurred out this background image so it's not quite as strong as it was originally. So let me turn this layer off and you can see that this is how the image looks unblurred and this is the image with the blur turned on. So let me show you how to create this blur and that will help you uh, once again it's another technique for creating a contrast between your image and your type so that you can read your type. Alright so I'm going to duplicate this background layer and what I'm going to do is go to quick mask mode. Now you can hit the Q key on your keyboard or you can simply click the quick mask button in the toolbar to activate that and make sure that you have black set as your foreground color in the gradient toolbar choose foreground to transparent and click OK and then you're going to hold down the shift key again and click and drag across your image like so hit the Q key on the keyboard or hit the quick mask button to deactivate it now what you're going to do is go to the filter menu and choose blur Gaussian blur and what you're going to do is just adjust this slider until you see the results that you want as far as the blurring and then click OK and as you can see we have now blurred out this image so we can add our type to it now what I did is instead of this type being black I reversed the color to white and I added a stroke and a uh, drop shadow if you need to know how to do that all I did was I selected the type layer and I clicked on the layer effects button in the layers panel and I chose drop shadow and I just accepted the default and then for stroke I added a black stroke with a size of three outside and all the others uh, information set at the defaults and then I clicked OK that's how I created that layer style so that's three very quick and easy ways that you can use to create some contrast between your image and your type so that your type is still readable and it's not lost in the jumble of your image I hope that this tutorial has been helpful if you have any questions comments or concerns please don't hesitate to leave me a comment or drop me a message thanks and I'll see you next time mm -hmm.